In the winter of 2021, I was speaking with a homeless man. I saw him sitting on the curb of an Ingalls parking lot, and when I asked him if I could sit beside him, he simply nodded and looked the other way. I wasn't sure if I was intruding on his space, so I just sat in his presence and watched how the people interacted with him. I watched one person drive by and roll their window down to let him know how cute his dog was. I watched many people drive by, avoiding eye contact at all costs, and I saw some people shine a guilty smile his way. After a little while, I turned to talk to him, and after some talking, I found out that he went by Missouri because he came to Asheville from Missouri, and that the aforementioned dog beside him had been with him for six years. I asked him if he wanted a cliff bar for my car, and when I brought it back to him, he began to open up a lot more. It was winter, and he told me about how hard the nights got, how the cold could rip away at a man's soul, and how long he'd been living out on the streets. As we continued to talk, he pulled out a small, compact camping bowl and poured out water into it for his dog. He whispered some things in the dog's ears and put the water bottle back in his bag as he petted the dog. From that small interaction, I saw so much. That experience and many others in the past years have changed my outlook on homelessness drastically and have brought me to become very passionate about the topic. I think that a lot of people, consciously or not, dehumanize homeless people thinking more of the word homeless than the word person. That's why in recent years, people have preferred to use the term unhoused, not because it's any more accurate, but because it removes some of the stigmas as the word homeless has, and it makes you think about it a little more when you say it. However, this is only a temporary shift of empathy, as the same stereotypes that have been applied to the word homeless will slowly be applied to the word houseless if we as a society do not do the work that needs to be done to change our perception of homelessness. If you ask someone their perception of homelessness, their heads are usually in the right place, that it's, well, bad. But a lot of people treat it as if it's just a crisis that came out of nowhere that we can't do anything about, or that it happens on an individual level as a huge character failure. The truth is, is that homelessness is a direct failure on the part of our economic system. There are hundreds of socioeconomic factors that one could point to, but I'd like to start by looking at some data. My hope so by understanding where homelessness comes from, we can be more understanding and empathetic of often hardworking people who are pushed down into the streets for a variety of reasons. To start off, there are 580, 466,000 people experiencing homelessness in the US in 2020. That number only reflects the documented population. In reality, these numbers are much higher. 40%, or over 174,000, of these 500,000 people have families and kids. We oftentimes think of homeless people as individuals, but in reality, there are lots of families that end up out in the cold. So what are the reasons for these high numbers of homelessness? Well, for individuals experiencing homelessness, the main reasons are lack of affordable housing, unemployment, poverty, mental illness, and drug abuse. Mental illness and drug abuse are common in the homeless community, but they are not the main causes. The main things that I'd like to focus on are lack of affordable housing, unemployment, and low wages. These issues are continuing to escalate. We are currently in the middle of an affordable housing crisis. We are dealing with the highest rates of poverty in 60 years, with 46 million US citizens living in poverty and 11 million spending half of their paychecks on rent. For many people, missing just a few paychecks or being laid off could lead someone to lose housing, not to mention even Americans who are above the poverty line often report living their life paycheck to paycheck, with 40% of high-earning Americans with incomes over 100,000 reporting that they live their life this way. We are talking about our working class with an often bottomless pit of homelessness and poverty looming underneath them. When you see a homeless person, it's important to remember how hard it often is to live in the U.S. for so many people, and how something as simple as a medical issue could lead someone to be financially ruined. Look, this data is bleak. It's not fun to look at, and it sure doesn't make it look as though things are getting any better. But I'm not interested in telling you that things are going to figure themselves out, because that's just not how change happens. We shouldn't be okay with over 500,000 people living out in the streets, millions in poverty, and families out in the cold. That shouldn't be comfortable. And we aren't going to get anywhere without admitting that this is a crisis. We also aren't going to get anywhere if we just get overwhelmed and don't do anything. My Nana tells me the story of a beach covered in washed up starfish. A man walks onto the beach and he picks up a starfish and he moves it into the ocean. 
Another man walks over to him and he says, look how many starfish are out here. You're not going to do anything. You're not going to make a difference. And the man picks up another starfish and he moves it to the ocean and he says, well, I made a difference for that one. And he picks up another and he says, and that one. All this story goes to show is that we can go up in the clouds and think of big picture solutions for big picture problems. But the most important thing is to figure out what you can do in your corner of the world. Small actions that you take can make a world's difference. So in the past few years, I've been trying a bunch of little things and have compiled a list of small things you can do that can make a huge difference in a homeless person's life. For example, if you have any extra blankets, coats, sleeping bags, either donate them to a nonprofit or just keep them in your back seat to hand out to homeless people as you see them. It's good to keep socks and hats as well as oftentimes homeless people have trouble finding those sorts of things. Make sure that if you are donating clothes, that you do not donate to for-profit organizations like Goodwill, as oftentimes the clothes don't go to the right place. But instead, try and find a nonprofit in your local area that will donate directly to homeless people. Another great thing to give out is non-perishable foods. My go-to thing to keep in the back of my car at all times is a box of Cliff Bars. They're super high energy and they last forever, so you can hand them out if you don't want to just hand out cash. But the absolute most important thing that people never talk about is that talking to homeless people makes a huge impact. Showing them that they aren't worthless just because they don't have shelter. Talking to them about their life and their struggles. It's a very eye-opening experience and can do a lot for someone who often doesn't have anyone to talk to or process things with. If there's anything you take away from this speech, just one thing, is to talk to homeless people. Treat homeless people like humans. If you see someone who's holding a sign, nine times out of 10, they're going to be willing to talk. Imagine more than 500,000 people, just like me, just like you, just like Missouri, with dreams, regrets, loved ones. Small actions that you make could be the difference between someone freezing possibly to death and making it through the night. It's not a responsibility to fix the financial crisis that got us here, but as humans, it is our responsibility to take care of each other. Handing out a few warm clothes you don't need, donating food, donating to nonprofits, and talking to homeless people are all very simple actions that can go miles in someone's life. You don't have to have a lot of money or go start your own nonprofit to be able to make a difference. And I hope that understanding how much of an issue homelessness is and how often it's not the fault of those who end up out on the streets will bring just a few people to do a few small things to aid someone who's been given so little in this world. Thank you.